Well, as you can see, the sun is up. Had a tremendous fire pit last night. Everything burnt to ash. Um, so that's uh, ready just to be covered over. Gonna get the hobo stove cracking now. Well, with the mess stove in it. Don't want to create any smoke I don't need. Um, get a coffee on. That's what I was saying about yesterday. Last night. Bags were just under the shower. Didn't rain. Bloody cobwebs everywhere. There you go. And I raised up the middle of it. If you can see, because the lights on my phone I can't see. A bit like um, a stingray. Yeah, the stingray setup. I think that's a new one. Stingray Basher. Right, the um, hobo stove the light. Little Lex had a little play with that last night. Managed to chop up the small bits of wood I need it for. That works well. Um, So we'll let the water boil and we'll go for a little walk again. Actually, there's that skull. Now it's daylight. Got a branch growing through his eye. That must have been up in the uh, tree for quite a few years before this branch came down. Poor little thing. Uh, one's completely flat, one's getting topped up. There's a little refresh Can you hear a woodpecker? There's a woodpecker over there. Oh, he's down there. Right, water's boiling. Um, yeah, is that stick you don't want to walk into? Woodpeckers pecking the wood. <coughs> Unless he wants his breakfast. Woke up at. Um, just gone seven because I had the door open on the TP. Woke up, saw the sunlight, thought what? Looked at my watch, I think it was like 20 something past seven. I thought no. Pulled my hat over my eyes and uh, went back to sleep. Got up at 10, so I'd never have three hours. Slept all the way through though. Didn't wake up. I think I finally went to bed about half twelve one. So I had a good six hours. Solid six hours. Oh, 
keep walking through cobwebs. Did wake up like with a pain in my leg. Um, Cause like my tobacco tin and the side pocket of my trousers. So I was sort of laying on that. So I sort of gave myself a dead leg. So I woke up at R7. There's that pot stand someone made a while ago. It fell over us, so I stood it up yesterday. Oh, the flies are out in force today. A little bit of rubbish there. Plastic sheeting blows in from the farms. It's the only rubbish I've come across since I've been here. And like bags of uh, horse food and stuff just blows across the farms. No, no crisp packets, no sweet wrappers, no cans of beer, which is nice. The old wood I used to go to was an evergreen. Just a uh, pine tree forest, and that was always full of rubbish and people. Lots of hoof marks for the dike. I'm not walking down there, I'll slip. But uh, all sorts of paw prints. Looks like a nice day. Not going out in the woods. Just having a little peek. I think I'm going to have a coffee and a bar of chocolate. I don't normally wake up hungry. Can't be bothered to cook. <coughs> See, it's a nice old day though. Going to take some adapting and getting used to. I try not to let it stop me from coming out. Well, everyone wants the nice weather to go out. Oh, I can't stand it. I suppose I'm miserable. But there's spider webs everywhere. Flies everywhere. You know where you are when it when it rains. <laughs> I mean, it's cold. But like, I don't need all my layers today. So I'm gonna be carrying them for no reason. And my big black jacket, just don't need it. But I've gotta bring it anyway. But at least in the winter, I'm carrying the stuff I'm gonna need. But if I don't bring it in the nice weather, you know, it might get a cold night or a bit of rain. And I won't have the stuff, so I have to carry everything. Back up the Stingray Basher Camp at Camp Wildfly. Yeah, just left the door open like that all night. There are little carabiners I put on the flap. Because buttons are on the outside as well as the inside so I'll show you on the outside probably can't do it one-handed yeah if I'm in the tent I can just do that up there and that one there and it kept it shut but I didn't need to close it so um, Nothing special in here. Oh, we can see. Fold in bed, resting on a couple of small logs. If it sunk a little bit, so I lost a little bit of height on the head kept sort of catching my head on the side wall all night. Hello. Bloody uncomfortable. 
inflating bag and a compression sack. Um, yeah, I should have used my normal trick jacket rolled up in his sleeve. Right, time for coffee. It's the day bag, day kit. So I don't need anything else. Out the other bag, I could just leave that. I don't have to keep digging for a big bag or carrying a big bag around. Split your kit up. Then you've got a bag for the kit you don't need. And then a bag for uh, stuff you need. You'll uh, notice last night I had the blue um, ground sheet out again, like I did last time on a hammock. Um, just means I can lay in bed with my boots off and get across to the fire, put logs in it without actually having to put my boots on. Um, and if it rained, I could have just pulled it back on, under the uh, teepee. I'll start doing that quite permanently. I think I want to do this again. The scorpion shelter. Quite enjoy that. Let's get a look from a distance. Gotta get my phone on charge though. Looks pretty cool. We like that. Right, I'm gonna have this coffee, bite to eat, and then put the TP away. I don't wanna be putting everything away in one go. I'll do some now and then some when I leave. need fancy knots. That's the first. I've just picked up Her, Maj Her Majesty's Coast Guard. I don't normally pick them out. Pick them up when I'm uh, out portable. Yeah, HMCG, Her Majesty's Coast Guard. Yeah. With a Welsh accent too. So that's a good idea of the distance. Oh, well, they've gone now. You're Mr. Mindwise Pete, Maverick Outdoors. Yummy. The Stingray Basher uh, doubles up as a solar station. <laughs> My little solar chargers fit perfectly in those little tabs. So I've got one on there and one on here, both facing the sun, and they fit perfectly. So no matter which way the sun is, of course these are on every corner and every side, I can just put them through so I can gather water and sunlight with the, uh, the, st the Stingray Basher. Yeah, it's a state-of-the-art high-tech, straight from Hong Kong. Um, yeah, it's a survival basher. It's uh, it's it's made for uh, shelter, stretcher, catching water, and collecting sun rays. Man, that's an amazing bit of technology there. <laughs> it's not about what you got; it's how you use it. Right, we'll give you a little bit of a tour. I've left the bed up because it's somewhere to sit and it's comfy. Um, bed roll, tent, solar stuff still on charge. Um, that's pretty much empty. Uh, I've got all the bug out stuff there. That all goes in and on the Bergen. And then just the day kit here, the webbing, pegs have got to go in the bag with the cordage. And everything else you can see, empty bottles of water over there. Uh, water's on the board now, and then what's left of my log pile, my EDC, my knife, my saw, 
and my little mini axe and a bag of rubbish. Fire pit's covered over. Uh, we just need to uh, sort of scrape off the spade and put that away. But it's just more manageable now. All I've got to do now is fold up the bed in my own time and I've just got my day stuff to pack up then. Basher goes in the webbing. The roll, uh, the ground sheet goes on the webbing. And everything else that's on the ground sheet goes in the, in the webbing as well. So just make it manageable. A lot of people say the worst bit is packing up. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, just do it in stages. Just pack up what you don't need. If you're not using it, put it away. But a good night's sleep. It's nice and warm. Just in the just in the five eleven shirt. Got my cap on. Just keep bugs out. It's way too hot for a, for a hat or a scarf or jumpers and fleeces. Nice day. For a walk. <laughs> Should have done the walk this week, but I done it the other week, didn't I? Um, don't know, I'm just going to chill out at camp today and then head home early afternoon. What is it now, lunchtime? 25 past 11. Got a good three, four hours before I got a Mike Oscar. So we're just going to chill out and relax. Got the solar light on charge. <laughs> um, hopefully, give it a good four or five hours. <clears throat> and then um, next time I come out, I'll um, make sure it's the first thing I get out of my bag. Biking trailer's going well. I did put those lights on last night, and they did illuminate the entire camp. Made everything glow red so I couldn't trip on over anything. But because it was so bright with the moon, turn them off just to save the power but uh yeah handy or lights they are they're a pound each i think no they light up the tent really well and being on the back of the trailer you just back your trailer in and they they give you a nice glow of stealth red might have to get the insect wipes out and get attacked by flies Oh yeah, and on my webbing I carry a handful of carabiners, I've got a couple of big ones, loads of these mini ones, so I've got a mini one in over there, so you don't actually have to thread it through the loops, you can do, but it's just quick and easy, just to clip it all on, and unclip it when you go, say threading through metres and metres. Yeah, we've got a station on PMR Channel 8. Who's out there? Is that you, Simon? <laughs> yep, it sure is. Hello, Sydney. Mate, we'll be, we'll be coming out like Simon. Um, not bad. Yeah, radio 3 to 4. But I'm uh, down in the woods. So I'm not actually on the top of the hill at the moment. So you're making it over to me. And I'm I'm in the trees. Nah, not yet, not yet. Um, what I'll do now is I'll have a walk up the top of the hill and then see how well you're getting out. Yeah, I'll cut off all that front old chase and uh, carry if you're on Beacon Batch. They're up on Beacon Batch at the moment there, not on the very top, but not too far. Ah, uh, what'd you uh, Right, I'll uh... One o'clock, got the hobo stove going. Have some noodles and a coffee, I think. Smoke's not too bad. It's burning hot and it's quite windy. So, I don't think the smoke's making it out of the woods. So that's good. Wind's still coming from the east to the west, blowing it away, same position it was blowing it last night. It's nice 
nice not to be covered in smoke. I think I'm gonna have a bite to eat and then pack up and go home. I've got the bed roll out the trailer so I can lay against it. Just been talking to Adrian in Devizes on uh, on the radio. Sid's out there, Jason's out there. I've got a fly on my phone. Yep, I'm uh, I'm taking you, and uh, I've got Adrian as well. No, I've came back down to get something to eat. <laughs> yeah, I think you did, you came back down there. Yeah, break a solid there. Oh, are you going to go back up afterwards? Yeah, I'll be up after. I'm just getting something to eat. So uh, I'll be back up top later on when I've had something to eat. Yeah, OK there, Simon. OK, I'll leave, um, I'm, I'm still setting up myself. I'm probably set up, but there's a break out there coming. Oh, well, Aid, you were coming down really well. Um, but better when the radio stood up. Said's booming through. Right, I want to get on with this. Give it a wee blow. Quite a few sticks in it. And my little makeshift handle for my uh, for my cup so I don't burn myself. That's well away. I don't really need to put any more in there. Sun's directly on the screen, I can't actually see what I'm videoing. Well, there's quite a few out on the radio today. I wish I brought the little uh, mini mast I've got. Um, and the little dipole for the top of it. So I'll know for next time it doesn't take up any weight. Not really big, so I'll bring that next time. Um, the rubber duck's doing fine on the radio, but the mask will be better. Right, dinner's uh, ready, it's just simmering now as uh, everything burns down. So I'm gonna finish my cigarette and sit on my bed and then eat. Right. Got that panel over there, I've just used it to charge my phone. That's still on charge. And that one needs to be moved because I think the shadow's just gone over it now. Uh, here we go, with the mini axe, I've just made myself a little spatula. Made a, a similar one last night to clean out the mess tin. And I can use it to scrape all the gunk off with some water in there. And then give it a wipe with a baby wipe. Nice and flat. Right, let's get cleaning. There you go, nice and clean again. Apart from obviously the uh, <laughs> bit that won't come off. Right, just having a quick coffee before I pack up. Change configuration of the basher, it's getting a bit windy. So I've just brought it back down like a lean to just to uh, shelter me from the wind. It's getting quite a bit windier and there's no point sitting in the wind. I haven't moved the bed, 
still resting on the sticks. Plenty of room under here. A couple of people sit. There they stand. Uh, so I'm going to sit under here, have a coffee, and then pack up and get going. Looks like there's flying squirrels now. Now I'm being lazy. Chilling out under the basher. It's my sight, what I can see. See up the hill. And I can see down the hill facing the sun. No wind at all, it's quite windy out there, and I don't really want to catch a cold. So I can enjoy the outdoors without getting cold, sunburnt, and have a nice coffee. Right, that's me knackered. Just been cutting off all the poison ivory off that tree because it's uh, choking it. Cut off that big bit, pulled out the roots, cut away all the bits that are growing up here. As you can see, just uh, chokes the tree and then the weight of it pulls it down. So if we can slow it down or stop it from growing, as you can see where it was growing all the way around here. Just cut it all off in about 20 places, took out big chunks, sections. Just that main bit left, which I think is actually holding the tree up. As you can see, the tree is on a bit of a tilt. But it's starting to come down already. And I've done the same with this one I started a while ago. That's why I normally snap my logs, but cut it all off up to as high as I can reach. Hopefully, I'll kill it all off. So it's dying now from what I've done it a few weeks ago but it's so well embedded in the tree it's all self-sustaining um, cut it all off no sprouts have grown on that one but the other one they started sprouting so I've cut all that back you know, nice big trees and that, that's what's pulled them all down at the other end if you see my overviews so uh, I've just cleared it as much off as possible if I had ladders I'd do the whole thing but I'm knackered now, it's hard work with just a handsaw and equal axe. Right, I need to pack up now and load up the trailer and uh, get going, I think. I've had my exercise. Right, all packed up. Tent, webbing, jacket, and rubbish in the trailer. Um, Bergen's going to go on top with the bed, uh, the trekking pole. Bag there's got all my cordage in it, so I'm going to use to strap it with everything down to the top of the trailer. The radio will go on my person. My DC and phone chargers. And there we go, leave no trace. Fire pit was just there. There's the one from the other week. Minimum scuff marks. Three logs left standing over there. Not out of place really. Uh, trailer's all packed up. Corner, loop round, corner, and a bungee on it. All the way over to the front. I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, yeah, why walk when you can ride? Why well, carry it when someone else can do it for you? Yeah, it's a lot easier with the trailer.
and that will all go on my back and around my waist and as you saw in the other video but this is no need for it that's what he's for right thanks for watching youtube uh it's been a great weekend it's always sad to go home but you know my life's in the concrete jungle not out here right take care and we'll catch you all on the next video